Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, December, what day is today? 19th, 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I am Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast, Vin German Length, episode number uh, 629. And... It's that time of year. Right, Gary? Uh It is. It is. It is. It is. Some might say, what time of year is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. (laughs) (laughs) Because I would like to show you the latest invention, the holiday season. That's what it's sounding like. It's like we're some infomercial. Uh, yeah, we're not inventing anything new. Uh, so, yeah. In, here in the United States uh, of recent years, there's been this kind of culture war going on. Um, it usually rears its head around Thanksgiving. Um, although I will say last year and specifically this year, I think are very tempered because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's less socializing and people going out and about, or at least definitely there was last year and this year is slightly tampered. Um, and so because of that, uh, I kind of wanted to talk about the fact that like, you know, we're in what's called the holiday season because it is a season full of holidays um, and people may not necessarily be aware of that. So I wanted to go through like sort of a short list of holidays that occur. Um, There's uh, roughly, I want to say somewhere between like a half dozen to a dozen of them that occur within about a month or a month and a half. Um, And because it got me thinking, you know, about how, so the culture war typically is about the fact that people say, some people want others to say or feel they should be able to say Merry Christmas. And other folks are like, perhaps you should say Happy Holidays because you don't know what their faith is. Mm-hmm. And so therefore you would, you know, probably be a little bit more open minded or, you know, more, um, you know, uh, just welcome inclusive to other people. Other people, other faiths, that kind of stuff. Happy holidays. Nice catch-all for everything. Yeah. Right, because I don't know what your faith base is. I don't know I don't know if you're spiritual at all. I don't know, you know, if you practice anything or believe in anything or sure. not. Um, in that case. Yeah, my so, thoughts uh, my thoughts on it is it's really going to end up in the end, depending on who's who's you're you're talking to, which means that saying happy holidays should be your safest bet because a lot of people i would expect a majority of people that if you use your own personal faith and and express yourself merry christmas then uh maybe you have uh, uh, a jewish person who just responds with happy hanukkah and then it's just like hey we're two different faiths and and we all appreciate it and we keep moving on with our lives which would be very appreciative um uh, but I think a lot of the the one thing about our society here in the United States is we like conflict. So we have the the uh, politically correct people uh, the being like, we really need to be inclusive and always just say happy holidays. We should never call it, say, Merry Christmas, even though the majority of people celebrate Christmas in one way or another. And then you have the people saying, 
Look, I don't care what your faith is. I'm going to express my faith the way that I want to express for us what I celebrate. And hey, if you say say happy whatever you celebrate back, then great. I'm not going to complain about that. So it ends up being this, uh, the United States is very conflicted about its attempt to be a melting pot. Yeah. And, and for Christ's sakes, saying happy holidays isn't a war on Christmas. <laughs> and, and I'm saying Christ's sakes specifically to you freaking Christians who have to say that a war on Christmas for trying to be inclusive to all holidays. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm finally going to... Hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to put my soapbox away. No, no, no. Damon, I would like you to reach over and grab the apple box and okay, just... Take it away. There you go. And there. Okay. It was a soapbox. It was not an apple box. <laughs> well, at today's modern age, and most of me, most of media, they call them apple boxes when you stand on them for various so, reasons. So, so I bring it back so we can debate. No, 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 no. Just saying. All I'm saying, if you come to me and I happen to to say Merry Christmas, don't be offended. Just say what do you celebrate, and I'll be happy. That's fair. Moving on. So here's here's the thing: how many of us know these holidays? Now, the other you two can see the list that we're going to run through. Um, there are. Two for certain on this list I did not ever know about before I did the research. Um, the other ones I had heard of. Yeah. Uh, one of them has an alternate name I had not heard of before. So, mm. and this is uh, just as a, a kind of a preface for folks. This is a highlight. This is not comprehensive. If we miss anything, if we screw anything up, obviously let us know. I'd, yeah. I'd rather correct the record than you know leave things incorrect. Uh, but these Provide are- us informational thing. Uh, yeah. I appreciate um actually, and and uh, for the for the labor of this podcast and for for the um, pleasure of my co-host, I try to keep everything to just a few sentences, because literally every single one of these could have multiple paragraphs mm-hmm. or a page or two explaining we're, the history and the background. We're we're, we're, we're just giving it a glance. We're not Correct. trying to be in depth this or is, anything. This is. This is not even a Cliff Notes version for those that remember Cliff Notes. This is right. Cliff this Notes are the, still around. I, I, I'm not in school. I don't know. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> I know. I, I don't know how Cliff Notes ended up getting their own like bar, energy bar, but they do. It's not the same thing. Look, all the the look on the packaging reminds me of Cliff Notes. Hmm. So, uh, first up, right after Thanksgiving, um, shortly around there, uh, we have... Thanksgiving in the United States, not Canada, because Canada's Thanksgiving is about a month earlier, so just, just want to clarify Thank that. Thank you for that. Um, so, we, this year, November 28th through December 6th, we had Hanukkah. Oh, um, Hanukkah. Yeah or some other pronunciation, which I'm not privy to. Um, Also known as the Festival of Lights. Um, If you have not heard of it before, it is a Jewish festival that lasts for eight days and nights. Um, (laughs) I just realized I wrote it days, and I'm like, uh, I think the nights play a piece of that. (laughs) Um, So it's uh, Hebrew. I believe the word Hanukkah is Hebrew for dedication. And it's based on the story of the menorah, which is a candelabra uh, type looking item. And uh, so the story of the menorah in the second temple of Jerusalem in the Hebrew calendar, Hanukkah, uh, it says, starts on the 25th of Kislev, um, which corresponds to the time frame between late November and December in the Gregorian calendar. That last part is it will move. Yes, it will. It will shift. It will kind of go around, you know, like how Easter in the U.S. or for those that are actually Catholic, I guess, uh, no matter where you are in the world, it kind of shifts or, or goes around. So it's not a specific set of days. It's mm-hmm. not like it starts on a Sunday and ends on a Sunday. It just it 
you know. Eight, eight days of some kind, some time period. I'm sure there's a way to determine which date it is every right. year. Well, you just look at the, the you, it's the start of Kislev. So that's, you know, it's always the start of Kislev. Right. The 25th of Kislev. That's when it starts, right? Well, as an example, next year, oh, this is interesting. Next year, Hanukkah, according to the internet, starts on the 18th of December and ends on the 26th. Oh. So next year. Yeah. So next year, the seventh day of Hanukkah overlaps with Christmas. Oh. And I'm uh, sure that's happened before. Just Right. So, you know, to me, this is all about the, as I used to say <laughs> when I talked about a certain event, I'm like, oh, this, you know, the, it's all about the sun, the moon, the stars, <laughs> position of the things in the universe. That's how we make a decision because picking a specific day on a calendar is difficult, apparently. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just my, that's like, that's my personal gripe about things that keep shifting or moving mm -hmm. because. Yeah. When you try to plan things, it does make it difficult if something is a is like mobile on a calendar, <laughs> as opposed to knowing every single year a specific something will be the celebration of something, even if it doesn't perfectly match. Like some birthdays are celebrated on a specific day, even though it may be off by a few days, things like that. Mm. So I'm going to make a presumption. Both of you were aware of Hanukkah. Yes. Correct. Yes. In fact, I think. Uh, as part of my uh, youth group field trip up into the Twin Cities area, uh, when I was younger, was we actually talked, we actually went to a synagogue, I think, or something. We talked, during it, we mm. talked about Hanukkah. So, uh, uh, despite being at a Methodist church, we did talk about other religions, considering that the Jewish faith is essentially the Old Testament version, only version of Christianity in some sense. Mm -hmm. I will Which is a bastardized version of an explanation of the Jewish culture, so don't take my word for it. Mm. Yay, America. Um, <laughs> the things ah. we do. So uh, I will say this. I don't know much about Hanukkah. I do have individuals that have been in my life that are Jewish. Um, I've not been around them necessarily for their uh, their faith, like to know about their celebrations. Um I'm probably going to say this about all of these holidays. I believe all of these holidays have some aspects of food culture to them. And that is probably the thing that will like uh, grab my interest the most. Um, mm. I will say this, that um, Hanukkah potato latkes, uh, potato pancakes um, sound fabulous to me and my taste buds. Um, the concept of carbs and fat with dairy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so I um, am, am tangentially aware, tangent, tangently, anyway, aware of Hanukkah through the chorus. Um, okay. Usually when we sing, when we do our holiday concert, the focus is usually on Christmas, that's just because everyone knows. But on occasion, we have done... Um, something related to Hanukkah. We have Jewish members in the chorus, some that are actually practicing, some that may not be, um, but they are Jewish. And um, uh, we usually will do a number every once in a while. Um, there was one year, <laughs> was it? Yeah, we did our, we did a very, um, like jazzy um um holiday concert and one of the songs we did was called hot hanukkah um and it had some of the um yiddish in it but it was it was a very just uh uh it was a it was a it was a traditional like words set to a very um jazzy syncopated rhythm it was actually kind of fun um but nice. uh, singing those words really loud um, really fast and in in a language you don't normally under you know you know read or speak was challenging but it was fun nice yeah all right 
uh, after that, we have, uh, I'm going to apologize for this because I didn't take Spanish, uh, Las Posadas, Las Posadas. Um, yes. which is December 16th through the 24th. I'm kind of curious, Jeff, since you live in Texas and you're way closer to Mexico than uh, Damon and I are. Nope, are no you clue. already fam familiar with this? No? Okay. This is literally the first time I've heard anything about it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, to be fair, it's what, everything that I've been seeing online says that it's mainly celebrated throughout Mexico and Central America, um, and that it's Spanish for the inns, as in plural uh, domiciles, like places that people would stay for the night. Um, it's a nine-day festival uh, called uh, – the interval is called the Novena during the Christmas season, which represents the nine-month pregnancy – while honoring the journey of Mary and Joseph from Nazareth to Bethlehem in search of lodging. So it is a uh, Christianity um, base, but the concept is that there's a ritual that takes place um, through it. I'm not going to go through all the pieces of it, but basically there's a procession. Um, people are gathered together. Some people may actually dress in the roles of like Mary, Joseph and have a donkey um, these type of things. And basically they're going door to door in a representation of them looking for the inn to see if they can come in. And I believe, I don't have all the facts straight, but I believe that you can go into a, a home if you're allowed in and then you pray um, yeah. or you could be denied. But you know, the concept is, is that everybody does this and then eventually um, the whole procession gathers in one place um, at the, the end. Hmm. So uh, in terms of the food, because I was just looking this up, um, because I wanted to know, I was like, surely there's like, you know, a thing with this. And sure enough, there is, um, there's singing. Uh, and then, uh, I love this, <laughs> this description of quickly looking over says that at this point, everybody goes in and the party starts. <laughs> yeah, Are you reading Wikipedia? Because that sounds very Wikipedia. No, it's, um, on slowfood.com. Oh. Um, this particular article, but it says that there's a punch that's hot. There's sugar cane, guavas, prunes, apples, and cinnamon. Mm. That's very yummy. Uh, adults add a piquet, uh, a shot of rum or tequila to the punch if they want. And there is pinatas. Uh, the idea of the pinata is that it is filled with seasonal fruits um, and candles, uh, possibly other things, and that people are blindfolded to strike it. The reason is that it symbolizes the devil. And the symbolism is that you are using blind faith to strike evil and let the good come out. Okay. Right. Uh, I was like, that's actually kind of sounds fun. Um, different form of impact play, but you fuck know. you, devil. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Yeah. Um, but then uh, this is the part that I really love. Uh, tamales are a traditional fare um, that comes with that. Uh, so I was like, yes, 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 yes. Um, but then there's also, and I don't know, uh, offhand, buenelos, um, are from street vendors. And from the sounds of it, it says it's a crisp tortilla shaped fritter. Uh, and it says they are generally sprinkled with granulated sugar, uh, but some like to pour brown sugar syrup over them, uh, before eating them. And then there's a tole, which is a thick, hot drink made of corn flour, uh, dissolved in water and flavor of the fruits and chocolate. So, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is when I'm, I've, I feel like I've heard of it before. Because when you said the ends, it, it, like something clicked. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been a long time since I've heard about this or like heard of it. So. I don't remember hearing about it before, but I can completely imagine it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that's fun. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't say anything else. So, uh, next up, we have Winter Solstice, also known as Yule, also known as Christmas Tide. Fun fact. Mm -hmm. It's really more Yule, winter solstice, because Yule is celebrated on the winter solstice, because winter solstice is technically just the astral phenomenon of the shortest day of the year. But some people refer to the holiday as winter solstice. 
well. So right. Yeah, I think that folks are familiar with the winter solstice if they're just simply aware of the concept of like within astrology, you know, astronomy, like the the whole like we have shorter and shorter days in terms of the length of time under the sun or with sun daylight in the northern hemisphere, I should say. Hmm. until we get to this day and then it starts increasing again and for those of you that have seasonal affective disorder this is probably a key thing that you pay attention to because you're like i can't wait till the 22nd baby and then some (laughs) because you just (laughs) want the sun to come back um a lot of it so Mm -hmm. yeah um there's a big fiery thing in the sky uh, that happens usually during a short time during the day right yeah, something like that. Hate that. Thing. Um, you may have heard of something called a Yule log cake. Mm-hmm. Um, around this time, it's one of my personal favorites of the holiday season. It's also called a bouche de Noël, um, in French. Uh, it's basically also called a Christmas cake. Um, there's all sorts of different variations across the world. Uh, in some reference, it's typically a sponge cake that is rolled and has a filling. And then it has been iced and it looks like a piece of wood, like a log, like you've actually cut uh, a log um, in that case. So uh, the icing or frosting usually has a bark like texture. Some people put like mushrooms with it. It's uh, one of those things where I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Chocolate is the is the main flavor. Go ahead. I like the description that you have down here. I'm just going to for you all. So pagan celebration of the darkest day of the year, originally called Yule, is one of the oldest recorded winter holidays in history. Historically celebrated by feeding a large oak tree into the fireplace. The tree would be cut down on a winter solstice and the Yule log would be slowly pushed into the flames over the 12 days of Christmas. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I have not heard of that part of it. Yeah, the the pushing of the log uh, over the 12 days of Christmas thing I found really intriguing, but then I was like, that's got to be a tall-ass tree. Like, because to me that sounds like if if you keep it as one piece, that's a lot of work. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I don't know how you keep just pushing the tree into the fire. Unless it's a collective fire, you know, fire in the center of town or something, or your village maybe. I don't know. Like, I was just thinking in the home. I was like, I'm not sure how you do that, but anyways. (laughs) <laughs> um, hence the Yule log cake, I think is a representation that came out of that in terms of like the, the food, uh, aspect of stuff. So, um, yeah, I know that, uh, for my, uh, friends that are Wiccan slash pagan or earthbound, uh, spirituality, it is also, you know, an important time for them. So Christmas tide is the word I was not familiar with. That's the one where I was like, okay, I'd heard of the holiday, like I've heard mm-hmm. of Yule, mm-hmm. and I've heard of Winter Solstice, but I had never heard of Christmas Tide. And I was like, huh? <laughs> um, in terms of that, so uh, to jump over, Wikipedia does say um, that it is also known as Christmas time or Christmas season. It's a season of the liturgical year in most Christian churches. Um, Christmas tide is identical to twelve tide. Um, mm-hmm. Also says it's a similar concept. These are all things I'm like I don't know of any of these things. Um, in terms of that, but it says Christmas customs include carol singing, gift giving, attending the nativity play, um, church services, eating special food such as Christmas cake. Hmm. Imagine that. Although that's not the same thing, I don't think. Mm-mm. Oh. This is definitely not the same thing. So this thing is what looks like a fruit cake with icing. Mm-hmm. Like a spice cake almost. Yes. Interesting. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah. So but so so far we've had two festivals kind of, and then we now have a one day thing. Mm-hmm. Uh so and then moving on to the day after so this is december 22nd we have uh i'm gonna guess on this one it's soyal i think is the pronunciation um and it's considered the winter solstice ceremony of the zuni and hopi peoples 
um, because it is the shortest day of the year and participants ceremonially, ceremonially bring back the sun from its long slumber, marking the beginning of another cycle of the wheel of the year um, to work on purification. Um, so there are prayer sticks that are involved uh, to bless the community, including homes, animals, and plants. This was another one I had not heard of before, and it's yeah. in our own country. Um, had you necessarily heard of it before, Damon? Or not Damon? Uh, Jeff, since you live? Nope. In the South? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I had a feeling. I've not heard of this one either. Um, Although it sounds like the name sounds familiar, but like I've heard it somewhere once mm -hmm. or twice, maybe, but not not something I've ever actually researched or looked into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so doing a quick review, um, the Hopi people, inhabitants of northern Arizona for over a thousand years, um, it says celebrate in December as when the Kachinas come down from their home in the San Francisco peaks to bring the sun back to the world. Um, and I will say this, uh, I, I feel very much ashamed as a white person to like live in the U S and to just take so much for granted and to live very ignorantly about our own past and how we came into possession of the land and like and mm. what all of that means. And there's been a, a recent trend I've noticed, especially in the field that I work in, um, for online workshop presentations. It's not often. I would say it's about a quarter of the time, maybe 20% of the time. The host or the main individual will give recognition at the beginning of the ceremony about the lands upon which that they stand and who the indigenous people were that the land was taken from um, mm -hmm. as kind of like a, you know, we know that we've done wrong and, and we honor, um, you know, the people whose land we stand upon as guests or, and I was like, interesting. Um, in fact, the national minority AIDS council, uh, U S conference on HIV AIDS at the beginning of the month that I attended, they had this amazing, beautiful opening uh, video segment, and part of it was um, an indigenous person blessing the entire conference um, and talking about how important it is that we recognize the impacts of HIV AIDS on the indigenous community. And I was like, wow, totally impressed. Um, and it really kind of gave me something to think about. So, yes. So that'll be on the 22nd. And then we get to what we mostly think of as the big day. So we get to. Because that's this. where all the uh, commercial talk about and everything that airs on television with, with specials is about. Because right. what's been playing a lot on TV? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, Frosty the Snowman, uh, uh, the Grandma got ran over by a reindeer yes there is a special yeah, called grandma <laughs> got ran over a reindeer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. nobody said that american culture had class so <clears throat> <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying you know um, was the night before christmas i love that one yeah, actually all right. Yeah. So, uh, so anyways, Christmas is December 25th. I mean, it is celebrated around the world. I realize I'm, I'm kind of focusing from a U.S. perspective, most of this. Uh, so, uh, I took this from a, a site or two. I don't have it completely linked uh, for Sora, so my apologies. But it says, these days, it's easy to mistake Christmas as the two months of the year. Everyone airs their hot takes on the Hall Hallmark movies, consumerism, ugly sweaters, Black Friday, how early is too early to put up a tree and the holiday ads that dare to evolve with the times. <laughs> okay. So speaking of holiday ads, mm -hmm. so there is an ad that is probably like one of the oldest that I've ever seen. And it is the Hershey kisses, like, uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. Like how does anyone know how old do, 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 I'm going to find do, that do, out. Where, where it's basically uh, that the kisses are acting like handbells. Mm-hmm. Although yeah. upside down handles. And, and they updated it. Did they? They did last year in 2020. Um, 
The Provo has aired every year. It is the longest running holiday commercial, and it says it has been and it debuted in 1989. <clears throat> Son of a bitch. So that means last year it was 20. No. There is a YouTube channel called Christmas Ads. Yeah. 31 years old. 30 something years old. 31. Yeah. Yeah. So this year it'll be 32 years old. Yeah. Y'all. It's just one of those ones. I think it's I always effective. remember it. I always remember it because it's just like, wow, that has been on for ever. So I don't know about in your in your areas. In my region, when I was a kid, there was a company that um for some reason, I don't know why. Well, it was kind of the kitsch at the time, and this was back in the 80s, I want to say. They did a parody song. I don't know if you want to call it a parody, an homage or whatever, um, mm-hmm. of Hark, yes. Hear the Bells. Mm-hmm. Hark, Hear the Bells. But it, but it was a commercial bells. promoting oh. their business. Oh, so Carolina Bells. Oh. Right. Oh, no. so, it was, so, it, so what they did was they changed the lyrics. And... Because it's a song you're kind of familiar with, like when the commercial comes on, you know, you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's, you know, their, their lyrics or whatever. And I haven't had television since I moved in here. I'd like to, to have local television really, like I have a digital antenna, but I don't really watch the local channels. Mm-hmm. So a couple of years ago, I ended up catching it. Um, this is before my mother had uh, passed. I think it, she, I happened to be over. And of course she always had to have cable and regular television. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As opposed to being streaming. So it was comical because it came out and I was like, oh, my God, I have not seen this commercial in so long. Mm-hmm. It was quite comical. Well, yeah. I don't know if like, you guys ever had anything like that that was like regionally classic to the holiday season, but was a commercial distinctly. You know I, I, mean? I don't think so. All I can, can remember at the moment when it comes to like Carol the Be- Bell's parodies is the uh, current sorted food ad for their Alive Pass It On that they did this past weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Like, I, I feel like there has to have been something, some kind of nothing that was memorable enough. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing memorable. But again, you know, no offense. I mean, there are holiday commercials that come to mind. Like when I think about this time of year, Christmas commercials, whatever you want to call them. And as an American, you know, like it's that time Mm -hmm. when these commercials come on. But I cannot for the life of me remember um, what it was. Um, But it's fine. I mean, there's, you know, I do recall. What's the word I'm looking for? I have nostalgia, I will say. Mm-hmm. We're like, right. you know, there have been some really awesome holiday commercials. There have been some not so awesome holiday commercials. We all know that. Um, right. But um, it is it's a sign of the um, uh, the times, especially here in America, because this is the thing. Like, everyone's trying to sell something to you or tug at your heartstrings. Because it's the holiday, because it's Christmas, they want people to give and give and give and spend and spend and spend uh, until they can't anymore. Yeah. If you're gonna give people a present, of course you need to buy it. Yeah, of course. Well, speaking of money, spending money, um, Christmas in America is also a trillion dollar industry. Jesus. With ten point eight billion dollars spent on Cyber Monday alone last year in twenty twenty. So between the baking, the decorating, the holiday movies, and the gifts, Americans will shell out approximately fifteen hundred dollars per household. I love this last line. It's the most wonderful and expensive time <laughs> of the year. Yes. Yep. That's why we why companies do holiday bonuses. Yeah, like I am sitting here. <laughs> How else are you going to be able to afford shit? <laughs> yeah, 
like um as I'm sitting here at this table and I'm looking uh oh yeah I got that but not really I mean it's not really for Christmas I bought stuff but I bought stuff for myself like a bought a flannel and some jeans because I knew my other jeans are going out and I'm realizing tomorrow so tomorrow hi everybody um so a few days before Christmas um Monday exactly I'm gonna get let's see three Amazon packages um, one of which is a snowblower that Jim and I w- saw on sale on Amazon. And we're like, oh, you know what? Last, I think it was last year, like we had all that snow and we were kind of fucked and we were looking for a snowblower and they were nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were like, hey, let's just go ahead and get it. Well, yeah. So we got a snowblower. Three um, Amazon packages. Uh huh. I have. Um, it's got to be two. God, I was trying to think. Is it actually two? Because <laughs> it would be great. This would be, continues the theme. No, no, um, no, it's not two. Sorry. Um, I have, I have something from. Uh, well, I can put it like this: I have two gifts from two two gifts coming. That are going to friends um, who gave us gifts last weekend, last week for Christmas because they were like, "Let's do it now." Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'll say that. So I have stuff coming that will be then given out, and then I have a um shit. Oh um oh is it is it is it coming tomorrow or is it coming on Tuesday? I think it's coming tomorrow. Wait for it. Wait for it. <sighs> yeah. Um, I have something that a certain Mr. Angelini Cook um, mentioned um, during our show last week that I ordered that is coming tomorrow. That will be part of the gift um, that I'm going to probably be giving Jim, although he doesn't know about it yet, because he hasn't told me what he wants for Christmas. Um, so he's getting a bunch of stuff that's going to probably be random that I'm I'm pulling together to make a gift for him. Uh, yeah. So. So there you go. Three, two, one. Nice. But again, like, spend a bunch of money. And one package for his husband, this <laughs> person. Yeah. Not official, but I mean, they're, they're, what's it called? You're living with somebody for for a long enough time, uh, you're essentially married. Um, God, I can't remember. Anyways. That's okay. Somebody remind me, I'm sure. So we've had two festivals for multiple days, three single days, and then we're back to a uh, multiple day event. So we have Kwanzaa, mm-hmm. December 26th through January 1st. Um, this was created in 1996 by Dr. Molana. Wait, 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 roll, roll that back. Roll that back. What? Say that, say that a year again. 1966. Okay. You said 1996. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> I was so busy trying to think about how to pronounce the name. I probably did screw up the year. Anyways, my apologies. Um, and so Dr. Karenga is, was, is, was, I'm not sure uh, about the contact or verb, but professor and chairman of black studies at CSU, California State University in Long Beach. Um, Kwanzaa, which stems from Swahili phrase, meaning first fruits, uh, honors African-American culture. And each of Kwanzaa's seven nights involves a candle lighting ceremony during which attendees light a candle representing one of Kwanzaa's seven principles, which are unity, self-determination, collective work uh, with responsibility, cooperative, and responsibility. Uh, economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Yes. So I'm going to, I'm going to really quickly say this because I feel like it needs to be said. Um, FYI, not every black person celebrates this. I just want to put that out there. I'm going to mm-hmm. say it, and I'm going to be a little. <laughs> um, 
So like if you if you are if you are like saying something to your black friends and you say happy Kwanzaa and they look at you funny. <laughs> that's why. Um, so um, that that's that's one of the also reasons probably safer just to say happy holidays and you got all, your, all the bases covered and, and you're not trying to our, accidentally offend anybody or use whatever your holiday is yeah so um i have known about kwanzaa um for many many years um because um when you do programs um like i was in a program called black achievers um that was all about like learning about um, African American culture and Black culture and life and such, and this I learned about this through them first of all, and then in school, probably not until high school, but I was also doing Black TV at the same time. I was learning about it at the same time, so it's weird. Like we're doing all of this at the same time because fortunately I had a wonderful um, history teacher that wanted you know to well round his 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 students and one of those was learning about other cultures and holidays um and this one was one that was easier to talk about um i cannot remember all the names of them um but i used to be able to name all of the different nights um Yep, yep, there it is. Sorry, as I go to um, uh, Wikipedia. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it's a very interesting, you know, take on the, the, the holiday season. And um, I was, I was, uh, always it, it was something that i always wondered like i would i never asked my parents because you know they were divorcing at the time um like why don't we celebrate this um and i i chose not to ask that question because there wasn't really probably going to be a good answer mm. um yeah and and uh, although we don't want to is a good answer well i mean they could have said that yeah. i didn't want to i didn't want to push it you felt it might um, have been sensitive matter yes um but i did know about it and i've known about it for many years and if you there are a lot of um american um black um sitcoms and tv shows and what have you that have them on there um it's also a really quick way to, if you're looking at um, cartoons and cultures, it's a way to like show another one uh, because it falls around the same time as um, Christmas. All right. I will say this, uh, what I find interesting, this is a Food Network article and talking about Kwanzaa, it says at its simplest, any dish people want to cook for Kwanzaa is like what happens it says there are no rules um the vast majority of dishes could be a combination of sub-saharan african from east or west soul food or coastal dishes from the atlantic rim um with a clear traceable route to african or african-american uh, items which i was like that makes sense i mean yeah it, it, it's it, a holiday which doesn't have traditional i would say that any season any holiday really has rules just traditionally this is what you have right so and and i appreciate you damon like for clarity's sake saying not every black person celebrates kwanzaa um because i think you know some people might make a presumption yeah. unfairly and not every white um, person cel celebrates christmas also you know not every jewish person celebrates hanukkah let's just you know, we 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 know these things. <laughs> not, not every Mexican Mexican American uh, celebrates soy or 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 you know, sorry, las tostadas. Right. I mean, I think yeah. that's a, a key thing. You know, I think about it in terms of this. Like, I spent a good number of years on 
Christmas Eve going to um, not mass, but church service. Mm -hmm. Um, In my area, in my region, uh, more a little bit out in the county instead of in the city, there was a gentleman who was very popular as the priest of uh, his like uh, church that would every year deliver a sermon on Christmas Eve as a character from the nativity. Mm. And so that was a very big deal in our area. Um, He would present, he would have like, I think three services um, on Christmas Eve and they were always standing room only like packed um, because he would present himself as a character from the nativity and every year the perspective obviously would change, but he would talk about what it was like to be at the nativity from that perspective, that point of view. And he would dress appropriately for that thing. So, and it wasn't just the human beings, like he could be a camel or a sheep or a donkey. Um, uh, the drummer, one of the three wise men, Mary, Joseph, every, everybody, I think, but uh, the baby. So, I always found that really interesting to to go for a couple of a handful of years. We went every single year to like hear the story told from a different perspective. Mm. Um, I mean, it wasn't hugely theatrical, but it was a very interesting way to um, yeah look at the the holiday and and the reason for the season, quote unquote. So, um, yeah, I think I think it's just fair to say that you know, like Kwanzaa, not specifically does everything relate to every single individual like everybody that i know that you know is like wiccan or pagan i don't necessarily expect them to celebrate solstice or yule um so i wouldn't necessarily just walk up to all of them you know and be like happy yule right uh so that's the 26th through the first gets us into the new year and then uh january 6th we have epiphany also Mm. known as feast of epiphany or three kings day Mm -hmm. Uh, which happens 12 days after Christmas on January 6th. It's a Catholic observance and a day of commemorating the visit of the three wise men paid to baby Jesus. So uh, I guess I should have started this before we even had it started into the whole (laughs) list. I was not raised in faith. So I, um, while I was technically baptized um, and went to Sunday school, uh, (laughs) did I go to, was it Sunday school or was it just, Summer Bible camp. I can't remember. Anyways, did you go to vacation Bible school? I think I went to vacation Bible school. BBS. I don't. I don't really remember because I was young. I heard stories like my father talked about how apparently um, the woman who was leading the program at the church had opinions about my father's drinking, which I find <laughs> comical because he was not at the church or ever went, but it was walking distance from our house. Anyway, long story. Uh, it just. <laughs> It's just really kind of comical. My father was not pleased about the fact that apparently she had planted a seed in me about like, you know, how uh, my father should not drink as much or whatever. And I made some comment to him and he was like, where is this coming from? And then I kind of said, oh, we'll miss so-and-so. Yeah. Oh, right. And then he was like, right. He's like, she needs to nose right on out of our family business. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, okay. I don't remember this. I was really young. I must have been like, you know, six, seven, eight or something. So anyways, that being said, um, while I am familiar with Christian, like Christianity and like Christian faiths, uh, because that's the one I was mostly uh, made a witness of, I did not realize that we had affirmatively specific amount of days later that the nativity, like that the visit happened. Mm Mm-hmm. I always kind of thought it was strange because as I grew up, I was like, okay, so the Virgin has the baby, question mark, and like, there's a manger, da 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 like, you know, we're at a stable, and then these three, you know, rich dudes in dresses show up with gifts. So I was just kind of like, <laughs> I always thought it was like, I don't know, a day or two later. I didn't realize, but it makes more logistical sense because I was kind of like, yeah, if you got to travel, like it's going to take you a week and a half or longer <laughs> by foot there or no camel flights. or whatever to get someplace. There are no flights. <laughs> there are no flights. <laughs> Let me get my Uber and and go go see the baby Jesus. Like, <laughs> Let me call an Uber. No. 
Yeah, there's there 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 are many theories, and one of the big one one of the biggest ones obvious is the obvious one, which is that it Jesus was not born on Christmas Day, like the day was just chosen. It yeah. which is really the case. Yeah, which I, I think a lot of people realize that this is not necessarily the actual day. It's Jesus's birthday. And how how can how can uh, how, how come there's a BC and an an AD? Like how does that work? Like the BC before Christ, right? So once Christ was born, then that would have been the end and the beginning of AD, right? But how how, how come it's on December twenty fifth when there's still like a few more days left of the year? That does make sense. Yeah. Well, so but that's but that's all different calendar stuff, and yeah. the Gregorian, and then you know the Julian and the naming of the month. Yeah. Anyways. But if we move into the next one. So my so here's my thing oh, is epiphany. what I want to quickly say about the calendar is I try to explain to people in my part time job with the payroll stuff because they're always kind of frustrated about how things go f overlap from the end of a month to the beginning of a month but the programs start again on the first mm -hmm. so like a pay week carries over from one from one month to another month but because the first happens in that two-week pay cycle like you start over mm -hmm. and, and so you have like you have a finite amount here and then you start with a new amount here and it causes these issues and so i've told people kind of as a joke i was like it would be so much easier if every month the first was the Sunday and you just knew the 14th was a Saturday. Like you just knew, you just always knew like every single month, the 14th is a Saturday, the 15th is a Sunday. Like you would just, it would make it things so easy in terms of planning and understanding conceptually, like how things go, but we can't do that because of the earth and the rotation and the, 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 the yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a perfect multi-month like 28 day calendar um, is what my point is. The only good one is February and that's only on most years. Right. And we do have to add the extra thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It, so it, this, this whole like 12 days later and so many days and blah, blah, blah. And when it's a, you know, is a thing is, is a whole yeah. bit, but anyways. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so anyways, that being said, <laughs> It would be um, great if every company had always had a Sunday through Saturday as their their work week instead of Saturday through Friday as some of them do, such as my own. Or one that I oh no my part time one yeah they still operate on a Monday through Sunday, so Monday is the start of the week, Sunday is the last day of the week. Ugh. Same, which it's like. Oh, no, no, we don't. Technically, we don't. Never mind. Yeah, but my daytime job, we, we go Sunday through Saturday. We just did yeah, seven days traditional. That's how we recognize things. So anyways, that being said, uh, the very next day on January 7th is Orthodox Christmas. So uh, Orthodox Christians in the U.S. celebrate Christmas um, a little bit later than everyone else. So it happens to be uh, in January and the date falls. So let me think about this. <laughs> I'm trying to read what I copied it. This date falls on December 25th in the Julian calendar, which existed before the Gregorian calendar. Orthodox Christmas also celebrates the birth of Christ, the Son of God. This holiday differs from Christmas Day because it does not observe pagan traditions like waiting for gifts from Santa Claus and decorating a tree. It instead focuses on religious customs. Have you ever mm. seen the uh, I'm sure everything episode on Christmas? It's great. Adam ruins everything. Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting. Because he, he talks about how a long, long time ago, when uh, uh, the uh, Christmas was a rather raucous holiday. And then the Christians usurped it. He usurped it. So I'm aware of Orthodox Christmas because um, my mentor uh, in my previous career, they were Russian Orthodox. Mm. 
from the, as we used to we we had a lot of jokes about this as we used to say from the old country. <laughs> oh. So men with like three foot long beards and pointy hats and outfits mm-hmm. who only speak Russian. Um, when when my mentor had passed away, um, we actually went to the Russian Orthodox Church for the ceremony, and that was very interesting because all of the women had to wear head wraps and sit in a specific area, and the men had to uh, wear. Uh, I think it was ties, mm-hmm. but no shirts, ties, and uh, no jeans, no sneakers, or you would not be allowed in the church. Mm. Like there was this whole thing about like we we all of us from work were going to go, and they were like, you must know these rules, mm-hmm. and there will be no if ands or buts. Like it was, and the thing is, is that the church is not really open to the community unless you're a member of the church, so to speak. Yeah. So it was a big deal to be able to go in and see the inside of the church and, and their kind of stuff. Um, so I've been aware of that and kind of a running joke amongst us. Um, Cause that's the way my mentor was. She was like, she was like, yeah, you silly people in your Christmas and December thing. She's like, we don't do that. We wait until January. And you know what we get sales. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dang, dang, dang. Hashtag truth. Yeah. Yep. I just She's think like, they're like we we spent less money. Yeah. I've I think I've only been vaguely aware of Orthodox Christmas. Um just because of um religious backgrounds and seeing things and um T V as well. Um that it was a separate you know, it's a totally separate Christmas than everything else. And um it was, you know, it was the I think a friend of mine called it just a hardcore Christmas. It's like you you don't get gifts. Like fuck that shit. That's 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 some that's some other, that's some other re- The only person who got gifts on uh, on Orthodox Christmas was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ himself. Yes. Um <laughs> and um something frankincense and myrrh. I don't remember what the three were. Gold. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. myrrh. Speaking of which, um, random, um, I have a beard oil, um, I think it's called, I can't, what is it called? <sighs> Shut up. Hold on. I'll get to it in a second, but it was, um, I really did like it. Uh, but it is it has the sense of um um frankincense and myrrh and the, the, the guy who sells it uh was also like so i know we're missing the gold but you can't really smell gold gold doesn't have a scent so here like if you want this we will send you a thing of um gold glitter so you can put it in the beard it's kind of like the gold part of it i thought it was kind of funny hmm. I didn't get it. I didn't get the gold glitter, let me rephrase, but I did get the um uh the scent. Oh come on. Where are you? What are you? Holiday scents were the Magi. That's what it's called. God damn it. Gifts of the Magi, yeah. Yeah, it was called the 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 one was called the Magi. The oil was called the Mad Eye. And I know it's, I don't have much of a beard, but I do like having like a different scent in it. And so this was a, it was the holiday scent combo that they had. And one was um, the Mad Eye, the other one was Santa's beard. Love it. So. It, it was a what? Santa's beard. The scent was called Santa's beard. And nobody has decided to present me Santa's beard. No. Well, to be fair, I think, Jeff, they know you well enough that you would prefer to have the gift of Santa's balls on your face as opposed (laughs) to Santa's beard. Oh, I want to play with Santa's beard as well, as well as plenty of other things. But still. Absolutely. I just found it. So, uh, so, so hi, everyone. Um, (laughs) So if you would like this, there's the company is called Celestial Beardies. Um, they're out of Columbus. Um, it's actually, I think, a friend of mine and his husband um, are, are 
acquaintance of mine and his husband. Um, and they, a friend of mine on Twitter, and now because they were doing because it was Black Friday, uh, announced that they were having a sale. And I was like, oh, let me go look. And I looked and I was like, oh, this is really cool. So I got, um, uh, I got a, a bottle of Santa's beard for Jim because duh. Um, and I got the um, holiday combo for me. And then they had another uh, um, set called Lune, L-U-N-E. And I got something else. I feel like I'm missing something. Nope, that's it. Yeah. So they have an Etsy store. Yes. Um, and lo and behold, there's Damon's review. <laughs> Great combination of scents. Definitely a good product. Ta-da. Enjoy the scent and feeling the feeling of these oils, especially Luna, will last quite a while and, and make my facial hair feel soft and w- look well maintained. Damien Babbage. <laughs> Santa's beard features notes of vanilla, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Whether you're working your post at the mall, the office, or working incognito to keep tabs on the naughty list, this beard oil will make sure your beard stays well conditioned. Mm-hmm. And the scent will remind you of your just rewards at the end of a long day. Yeah, so, and then the Magi features notes of frankincense and myrrh, two of the three gifts brought by the Magi to the newly born Messiah. But what about the third gift, you might ask, with fear in your heart? (laughs) Whatever. I assure you, my friends, your concerns have been heard. While we cannot afford to provide true gold with our beard oil, as that would almost certainly double the price, we can provide you with a kingly experience all the time. By request, we will include a sachet of gold glitter with your order, free of charge. I believe that's called a sachet. Uh, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> sachet. I like sachet. <laughs> I would like to take a point off your gay card for not calling it a sachet. Girl. Girl. Note, I didn't say I took away his gay card. I'm just taking a point from it. I, I consider a gay card more like a punch card. Oh, if you would like, they have a collection called the Holiday Sense, mm-hmm. which is one each of the Santa's beard and the Magi. So, um, so yeah. So one of those, um, one of my reviews was meant to be for that, but I think it just fell on the Santa's beard one because um, I was doing it on my phone and they scrunched up the, 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 the titles of everything. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember, so I bought the holiday scents, got an extra one of the Santa's beer. So the gym or I would have it technically. And then, um, uh, then just got, I think I just bought the Luna. Um, cause they have, they have a combo they have two combos. There's only one that I don't have. Well, two that I don't have yet um, of the sense that they normally carry. Um, um, I think one is called Orion and one is called Soul or Sun. Or... So anyway, so yeah, hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. The the Soul one I was just looking at um, features notes of lemon, orange, tea tree, and eucalyptus. Recommended first thing in the morning, just after a shower, the invigorated scent will help awaken your senses. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Not a sponsor, but yeah, endorsed. Yes. So well, there you go. So this was a really good idea, Gary, because I don't think, again, I going back through the list. I would like to, to add an honorable mention. And you say this is for American holidays, holidays celebrating America, I should say. I would like to add December 26th, Boxing Day. In Massachusetts, Governor William F. Weald declared every 26th of December is Boxing Day in response to the efforts of a coalition of British citizens to transport the English tradition to the United States but not an employee holiday. Uh, I have to say it had it was a, trans, a tradition with my family that we would have a Boxing Day party at our house. 
Ooh, on the 26th of of December. And there is reference to it being celebrated in the United States. But based off of everything that Wikipedia says is referred and ended up becoming this basically a second Black Friday or an international Black Friday because it's like sales. It's a shopping know, that's holiday. What that's what I'm reading. Celebrated the day after Christmas occurring on the second day of Christmas tide. Although it's originated as a holiday to give to the poor, it is primarily known as a shopping holiday. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So, so in addition, we could all, also that. say, if we include Thanksgiving in the holiday season, that we would also have Black Friday and Cyber Monday as as holiday sp- specials or mm-hmm. holidays. I don't want to consider Black Friday and, and, and Cyber Monday holidays. I'd rather, I'd really rather not. So it's funny that you say that because I was like, I wouldn't necessarily consider those holidays, but then it made me think of how I live in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And here for many, many, many years, not recently because they changed things, um, but from my birth pretty much until probably about the past decade or five years ago, somewhere in that window in Pennsylvania, the Monday after Thanksgiving or the Sunday, depending, was known as the first day of deer hunting season um, with like a uh, rifle as opposed to bow and arrow. Mm-hmm. And so that was considered a holiday and many students would miss that day suddenly mm. due to illness because they were out hunting at, you know, five in the morning or whatever. So they have the hunting fever. Yes. Yes. Imagine that. Um, so that was a, that was a thing. So yeah, anyways, so just a kind of an overview of some, um, some holidays to bring a little bit of awareness, um, you know, and that there are a multitude of things that go on about this day. And these are just, like I was saying, like these are mostly for the most. Uh, well, this particular list uh, are pretty much like faith based, and uh, if you bother to look online um, or want to, there's pretty much every day of the year, 365 days, celebrates something. True, and it doesn't have to be faith based. Like mm-hmm. trust, you can find if you want something to celebrate, you can pretty much do it every single day of the year. There are random food celebration days. There are obviously, you know, like awareness days and birthdays and stuff. But there's also, you know, like, you know, um, yeah, just just a donut day. Mm -hmm. Yes. All sorts of random things of that nature. So I hope that this, you know, provided folks with a little bit of a education or a new aspect to think about things that we are in the midst of several different things happening around this uh, time of year, you know, for celebration. Mm -hmm. I once had a link to a page which lists off like every like day that was listed like today is donut day that sort of thing Mm -hmm. uh I can't I don't I don't remember where it is I don't have the link anymore in America if I please no that doesn't give it I used to do that at work um, for a period of time, I was responsible for updating the work calendar that all the employees could see. So, like, we would list specific things that happen on, on certain days, but I would typically pick a food celebrated day once every single week of the month. So, I wouldn't do it every single day, like all 30 days or whatever. I would just pick one day somewhere between mostly Monday through Friday of each week of the month. So people would know like, oh, Wednesday is pierogi day or, mm-hmm. you know, Tuesday is cupcake day or just whatever thing. <laughs> just random crap like that. So people would, you know. Oh, here's a, here's, here's something. Oh my God. There are 200 December holidays. So today, December 19th is actually a holiday, ha- has five holidays. It is National Hard Candy Day. National Oatmeal Muffin Day, Goa Liberation Day, National Emu Day, and Look at Your Evergreen Day. Okay. So you can Tomorrow. Look at your evergreen while petting your emu, eating an oatmeal <laughs> muffin. <laughs> I missed something. Tomorrow is is Games Day, Go Caroling Day, and National. I love this one. 
sangria day. Oh, and you can have a hard candy in your mouth. There yeah. you go. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so nationaltoday.com uh, has just all the holidays. I'm just checking. What, what, what is what? What holidays are my birthday? Oh, August well, only has 128. Of the internet. Alrighty. My my birthday is celebrating uh, National Chop Suey Day, uh, Summer Bank Holiday in England and Wales, Ooh. National Lemon Juice Day. Uh, according to Hoyle Day, S- more herbs, less salt day. Oh, fuck that. Um, <laughs> individual rights day. And international day against nuclear tests. Wow. <laughs> Since you started it, I'm looking at mine. Uh, my birthday is cook something bold and pungent day. Oh, it's no. also... National Cappuccino Day, National Dunce Day, National Harvey Wallbanger Day. Hey, that's a cocktail for those of you that don't know. Um, National Parents as Teachers Day and uh, STEM or STEAM Day. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's fun. National. Is it, it's called National Today. National Today.com. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Here we go. Na- no, Might no, we well find it out. Might as well do it. How well, Dave you- is looking that up. So, uh, Harvey Wallbangers. Um, to give people a, a quick uh, history. Um, a drink is made with vodka, orange juice, and Galliano and was created by bartender Donato Duke and Tone in his Los Angeles bar, the Black Watch, for a surfer named Tom Harvey. Harvey supposedly got so drunk he started running into the walls, hence the drink's name. <laughs> wow. God. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Galliano is a liqueur. Uh, that has strong notes of vanilla and anise. Uh, anise is the uh, licorice flavor, for those mm-hmm. that don't necessarily know what that is. Um, also has a subtle tone of juniper, peppermint, lavender, and cinnamon. Wow. I've never had Galliano. Um, I've heard of it, but interesting. Okay. Oh, so, gosh. David, what's your what's your birthday <laughs> full of? So, there are eight holidays on the 25th of October. Um, World Pasta Day. Ooh. Hey, um, British summertime ends apparently. I'm in the UK. International Artist Day. Nice. Katy Perry's birthday. That's that's great. <laughs> oh, oh. National Greasy Foods Day. Hmm. Yeah, that's a holiday apparently. Um, National I Care About You Day. We honor our loved ones for no other reason but to tell them we are grateful. Okay, whatever. Um, it is also National Mother-in-Law Day. Aww. And then Sourest Day. S-O-U-R-E-S-T Day. So like sour candy. It's a food and beverage one. It's time for a sensation overload that will make your mouth explode. Uh, so if we're talking about celebrities' birthdays, uh, uh, my birthday is the same day as Michael Jackson. Uh, my sister was born on the same day as Janet Jackson. My brother was not born on the same day as Tito Jackson. <laughs> well, that's good to know, girl. Boom, 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 I... boom. Love that joke. <laughs> and with that, I'm sure you and I'm sure your brother and your brother is super happy about that joke every time you tell it. Uh, I don't think I've ever. To, I, don't, I don't think I have ever told it in his presence. He, he just wasn't born on Ed Jackson's birthday, so, period. So I just specifically call out Tito Jackson because for some reason I find that funny. All right. I could say Jermaine Jackson. Anyways, that's beside the point. Anyways, uh, that's the end. That's most. Maybe yes, no. Yeah, okay. okay, let's do it or let's let's end it. Uh, play with Scott Tech Desk comes out loud dot com. There's there's a blog there. You can find links to uh, all these holidays there, as well as many other links. Or you can find also shoot us an email. It comes out loud dot com. Shoot us an 
uh, voicemail. So give us a call, dingling at three six one C L Talk. That's three six one two six five eight two five five. You can follow us on various social media outlets such as Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter, uh, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can fi- join our entourage chat and chat us up at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Um, you can follow our Google calendar to find out when we're planning to record these. We may have a special ep- Ooh, excuse me episode next week. Uh, so find out when that is at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements such as the Cubs Out Loud logo shirt. Whether in, in various different styles, including sweatshirts that I'm wearing, a Cubs Out Loud hat that Gary is wearing. We got mugs, backpacks, a whole plethora of things, including some designs that are made by Smashy the Bear. You can find other designs by Smashy at his T Public uh, page at t- at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can pop over to Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And if I didn't mention it, it was zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. I b- might be going through this really fast. Uh, you can also <laughs> send us some cash at, at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on basically any podcast directory. If we're not there, please let me know and I'll make sure we are. But Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Audible, Amazon, uh, and... Yeah, that's about it that I can think of for the major ones. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box F, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, or Windjump, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, which um, Bears of Dragons will not have an episode this week, but we will have one the following week. Uh, and uh, pretty soon here, I'll be back to streaming some Final Fantasy and getting into Endwalker, now that it's been uh, a few weeks out, I will be spoiling the main scenario. But instead of our little Essegos, we will be on Emigos, a Hrothgar. And he will be pay- playing a Reaper. Reaper, Damon? right? Reaper. Okay, because it kind of sounded like you said Reaper, and I was like, um, Reaper. No. <laughs> If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-79 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Ciao for now! Happy holidays, baby!